Uh, and thanks everybody for sticking around. I know you're hungry, probably uh, like feel the effects of uh, time zones uh, traveling. Uh, I do, but uh, we can we can make it another 30 minutes and then uh, we all have the social event. That is nice. So my name is Johannes. I work with Hal Finkel at Argon. Uh, and I will talk about compiler optimization for OpenMP accelerator offloading, um, which um, I'm mostly grateful for that I can get money for doing this, so um, I'm, I'm really happy that they pay me. Um, so what I, what I looked at initially, and this is a couple of slides I, I borrowed from an, a talk I gave last year at the LVM Dev meeting, is when you think, when we think about compiler optimization, we think about something like constant propagation. So we have a, like, um, a variable y that is constant and it's used, and then we ex ex uh, expect a compiler to replace all uses with the constant value. So far, so good. Now, we also need people to parallelize their code, or people want to parallelize their code because they want to have performant programs on modern hardware. So they actually like parallelize their code. But at some point, uh, we stop doing exist, like we start applying existing scale optimizations if people parallelize their code. So currently, um, if you if you run this to the HTC or uh, LLVM Clang, um, actually the the Y is not replaced inside the parallel loop nor after it. And that is kind of a problem because this is like a very conceptual, very easy like, transformation and a lot more like, harder and more interesting transformation are prevented as well. So what do we currently get for parallel, uh, parallel related optimizations? And the answer is, unfortunately, we don't get anything by the compiler. Like for like LLVM Clang doesn't give you like parallel parallelism specific optimization. So like your parallelism is not only not optimized, but it's actually preventing optimizations that are otherwise happening. I'm not talking about runtime libraries here, and I'm talking about up to LLVM 8.0 because we have some stuff in there now. Um, but let's let's go on and I will, I will let you know what. Um, the first question you should ask yourself, but why is this important? Because my parallel program scale and, and apparently everything works out fine. And, um, but I looked at the following, I did the following experiment. I took a benchmark here, Lulesh, uh, the OpenMP version, and I ran it without OpenMP, so I disabled OpenMP completely, which gives you a scalar program that runs. And I compared the performance ver uh, against an OpenMP version run with one thread. Like base sequential is no OpenMP, base parallel is OpenMP run with one thread. And you get like 3% slowdown. Okay, you could argue 3%, maybe not too bad, you get scaling through OpenMP, you get parallelism. It's really good, uh, that, that gives you performance. But you take the next benchmark, BFS from Rodinia, you get like 8% slowdown. And I continued Pathfinder in Rodinia, you get 40% slowdown. And then SRAT in Rodinia, you get 140% slowdown if you execute it with OpenMP compared to executing it without. And that is kind of bad. So we, we first increased the execution time of, your, of our programs by more than uh, twofold before we use the cores to like, get faster performance. That is kind of like counterproductive. And this is, now people would argue or people like sometimes tell me, but yeah, this is like the runtime and you take a better runtime or whatever. And I will show you, this is not the runtime. Let's, let's go on. So, there are two different categories of optimizations if you look for compiler optimizations for parallelism. They are the ones that enable sequential optimizations in parallel programs, and they're the ones that change the parallelism, that, that, that work with the parallelism of the parallel program. Now, for the first category, we can reuse the transformations and uh, we already have, because we optimize sequential aspects in programs, but we just don't optimize them in parallel programs. Now we would like to reuse the code we have because we have it, um, and we can do that. There are patches for review app now that start doing that. Um, while for parallel aspect optimizations, we actually have to rewrite transform. Uh, we have to start writing transformations because we don't have any. Now, what does that mean? That means that for the sequential aspects, we actually need a way to enable the existing code on parallel programs. Um, we did that by introducing a suitable abstraction inside LLVM. That is done. It's upstream, you can use it. That is, it, after 8.0 branched, we, we introduced something, I will later on show, that allows you to optimize parallel programs, at least the sequential aspects of them, in, with the existing codes, like very few modifications. 
Now, for parallel aspects, we have to re we have to actually write the optimizations from scratch. So we have like a different choice here. So what we can do is what I propose we should do is introduce a, a unified abstraction layer, not only for OpenMP but for parallelism, against which we optimize. Why? Because if we, it's not yet clear how our parallelism re is re will be represented in the LLVM IR in let's say a year or two or five from now. But we need optimizations. Now, if we have an, ab an, an abstraction layer here that abstracts away from the actual encoding of parallelism, is it uh, runtime library calls into the OpenMP runtime? Runtime library calls into another runtime? Is it tape here? Is it uh, a parallel IR as proposed by different parties? Um, we, we abstract away from the representation and, and work against a parallel abstraction layer. And we, in the URL uh, talk last year, Hal talked about this and showed some slides how that could work and we have prototypes there. And um, I will today actually talk about an optimization for parallel aspects that is OpenMP specific. But a lot of the things that, we, that I did there, we could extend to other languages as well. Okay, so the first thing, uh, the first part was to talk last year at uh, LVM Dev. Now I talk about the second part. Um, so what I noticed is the following. That is, a, a couple of you might have noticed if they ever did OpenMP target offloading. Now, if you have uh, a, a function work, work one, and you say, okay, that should go to my target, a GPU. You say, pragma um, target teams parallel. Teams give you the, gives you the first level of parallelism across thread blocks, and parallel gives you the second level of parallelism inside. And you say that, and you uh, compile it with Clang or three of OpenMP target, and you get reasonably, reasonably good performance. So this will actually give you like some, some good code. Um, then you decide that some other work, work too, should also go to like on the target, on the GPU. Uh, you write on target teams to get first level of parallelism. You write on parallel in the next line to get the second level of parallelism. And that will also give you relatively good performance. So you still, we're still in the, in the green here, so all is good. Now, but you now notice that you have to on target teams twice which basically means you go to the, your target, you start a bunch of teams there, you do some stuff, and then you come back to the host just to go back to the target afterwards again. So you basically like go back and forth, which is already like, which you could say, huh, this is probably not necessary. I could just stay on the target because I, I go back right away anyway. So let's just write on target teams in outer scope and then on parallel in inner scope, which will go to the target once, start a bunch of themes, use the teams to compute work one in parallel, and then use the teams to compute work two in parallel. Um, and then it turns out that you can now get re probably really poor performance, like right now, if you would do that. And that's kind of unfortunate, because you did something as a, as a programmer that should help you, that should give you better performance, and that is a transformation that we like, kind of would expect. But the situation you created actually caused us to like, create really crappy code. Uh, really crappy is the wrong word, but probably not as performant as the original word, as the version we had before. And to see why, let's let's look behind the curtain of Clang. Um, right, like this is a little bit a different example, and I will mainly talk about how Hotspot is executed. Okay, um, what happens here is um, the Hotspot, like the work function, is executed um, by n teams with m threads each, all working, all executing work concurrently because target teams in parallel are in the same directive. And Clang re realizes that and generates code that just like execute work concurrently with every, all the parallelism you have, and that is good. But if you now say, okay, you're already on the target, and now you have the parallel there, now the situation is different. Now, initially, Clang creates one master and n minus one worker thread, uh, with teams, and then the worker teams have m threads, but initially they idle because the, the master team is, it's master team's turn, master team executes foo. Then you hit the hotspots, which is the parallel part which you actually want to execute parallel by all of them. And now there is communication going on. The master delegates the work to the, to the uh, before idling threads. So it tells the threads, hey, there's this work function. I want you all to execute them. And um, while they do that, the work, the master idles. And afterwards, um, they come back, tell the master they're done, the masters execute bar concurrently and the workers idle again. So this is how this will be executed. Now, the problems here are that you have a separate master work or team that costs resources. 
And all these, like all the synchronization communication, increases your resource, uh, increases the amount of resources you need, like GP, uh, like registers, which might actually be a problem for you if you're on a GPU and your register pressure is is increased by this. The synchronization itself has an overhead, so you communicate back and forth between the master warp and the and the uh, worker threads, and once you go, like once you actually generate the code to do all this synchronization, all this communication, and all of that, like optimizing it after the fact is basically impossible. Like the thing is, we generate, like currently, Clang generates a state machine in the user code module. Have you tried to analyze code that contains a state machine before? It's like it has function pointer calls in in in, in all of that, like all these niceties. That is, it's very hard to analyze and optimize after the fact. So let me walk you through how Clang does it and how I propose we change it. So up here you see the current um, code representation uh, or the code representation or a tool that does it. So it's like code representation tool, code representation tool, um, code representation. Um, uh, so first we get some OpenMP code that goes through Clang's code generation, like the OpenMP code generation uh, for target offloading and we generate device code and host code. And the device code is um, augmented with runtime library calls and some logic, the aforementioned state machine. So we actually generate our user code, we generate host code, which is like what you would expect, a device code, which is the device part in the target regions, runtime calls, and logic. Now we have the device runtime, we um, optimize the host with LLVM, uh, a separate LLVM invocation, so we, inv like we create a module for the host code, run the O3 pipeline on it, um, then we create a module for the device code and the run calls, uh, link the device runtime into it, at least we should, and then we uh, run an O3 pipeline for the device code. And afterwards we take the assembly and build a fat binary. That's more or less what we do. Now, the problem here is that, um, so if uh, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna do offload specific optimizations for device code. So the problem is, the device op part here, like the pipeline that runs on the device op, uh, has to deal with the runtime calls and the logic that Clang generated out of like to to make all this like work, all the synchronization, the communication between the masters and the workers, all of that was generated by Clang into the device code module, and now we have to like optimize that, and it's very confusing. It's very hard to do. So I I want to move the logic, all the logic, into the runtime. A like Clang shouldn't generate any like logic there. It should just like call a like the runtime should contain the logic, um, including the state machine at least in the beginning. Um, then we should reduce the number of, of runtime calls we have to know about because like we can encode runtime call knowledge in our optimizations in analysis, but if you have like 15, 20, 25 different OpenMP runtime calls, you have to know about what they mean, what they do, or if they interact with your with your transformation. Um, that is hard. If you have three, you can actually go through and think, does this interact with my transformation? If yes, how? Okay, so this is, this is the first thing. There are patches pending to do exactly those two things um, that fix the motivating example, like the problem that I use as motivation here, like where you move the target teams to the outer scope and then you don't get good performance anymore. Like with those patches, you still would. Um, they need reviewers, so there is currently a lack of, of, of active people looking at those. And if you're interested at all in any of this, please just contact me, let me know. You can take a look at the patches. And for now, let me, let, me talk about the, um, let me talk about the second thing, which is, sorry? Okay, which is um, optimization between device and host code. Because when you like, split it early in, in the front end, if you split device and host code, it makes it kind of hard to like, reason about the interaction of those two. You, you might want to do like, things like code motion between device and host code, because like, if you have in the device code, you have a loop, a for loop. What happens to for loops in LLVM? For loops are ro um, rotated to, to give you a do loop that has like an in initial if condition, and, like an if and then a do loop. Now, the problem is that if is decides if you do anything at all. So you shouldn't evaluate that on the device but you should evaluate that on the host and only in case you would execute some code, go to the device. But now that code was kind of during, like in this, in this process generated in the device module, how to get that out of there. And like one way to do it is to uh, come up with something like cross-module interprocedural optimization. 
and I'm scared to do that. I don't know anybody that ever did cross-module optimization, and I don't want to be the first. Um, but if you think that is something that we should do, or if you think that you did it and it works well, please let me know. I would currently prefer something else, but that has some like neat implications for all of you as well. So what I would like to do is I would like to merge the host and the device module. And then I would say, we generate, we still generate exactly the same things, but it's in one module. And then we optimize one module. And then we generate the, the assembly. That comes, I, I will not go into too much detail here, but the things we have to do is like basically late um, splitting into two modules so the backend can actually, like we don't have to rewrite the backend, which we, like, I don't see a benefit of, of doing anything there. So just the middle end should see everything. Now, how, what is the problem? The problem is target, um, target dependent information. Uh, so basically, you have you, currently we have sub targets on function level and and target uh, information on the module level. You would have to sync the target information to the global to the globals level, like to first level um, in in a module. It's not per module, but it's every global has a has our own target uh, triple. Okay, so that would that would be required here, and I would like to start a discussion on this soonish. So if you guys has if you have any inputs here, please let me know. For now, let me talk a little bit about the target region interface. Um, it is a simplified implementation of OMP, tar uh, OMP target. Um, it should be easy to reuse that for other projects like F18. And as a comparison, the current OpenMP runtime NVPDX code gen has 5,000 lines. That thing has 500. So that is, that is the um, dimensions we're talking here. Um, the interface doesn't try to be smart, but it, it, it allows the smartness to be moved in the middle end by exposing all the information we have in the front end in the interface and making it really easy to do a transformation there. So the device runtime interface and the implementation are, as well as are separated, which means that everything except the implementation of that interface is actually target independent. So it, it's target agnostic. The, the client parts for target handling, the um, LLVM optimization for target handling, all target agnostic. Just the implementation of the interface you have to do in your device runtime library, which I here did in, in CUDA for the NVPDX thing. So I actually implemented the interface in CUDA with exactly the code that Clang would generate as IR in our module. So whatever Clang would generate now in IR in our module, I, gen I just wrote it as CUDA into the runtime. Um, so one optimization I did in the LLVM part is uh, SMT, uh, SMPDization, SIMDization, uh, which basically uses interprocedural reasoning, hard to do in Clang, to um, place minimal guards or uh, minimal synchronization Basically, what, we, what that boils down to is if we figure out that it's legal, we, we turn on SPMD mode. All threats are running all the time. Now, um, currently, it, can't, it will not actually add any guards or synchronization, but it will look if everything that has a global side effect is inside a parallel region, as in our motivating example with the work one and work two, it will say, I can just run this in parallel. All of them can run in parallel. I don't need any like, state machine. I don't need any, anything. Now, the second optimization is in fallback. In case I need a state machine, I might want to use a better state machine than the runtime implementation. So what happens is um, we um, look at the thing. If we can't go into SPMD mode, we look at reachability and post dominance to restrict the set of potential next parallel regions from our, like everything is, is potentially uh, executed next to the following through as potentially executed next. And then we, um, look at what values do we really have to communicate back and forth. And it, it turns out that that is also not implemented. What is currently implemented is we generate a state machine that is as good as the one as Clang generates in the front end into the user module. Okay, like lastly, for the second part of the, of the optimization that I want, where I merge host and device code and then get um, communication, like optimize across host and device code, I would use um, something that's called abstract call sites, which are in, like, which are in trunk, which you can use, um, that are automatically used already to optimize uh, pthread create and um, OpenMP parallel four, or OpenMP parallel to be precise, and they work the following way. Currently, we have call inst and invoke inst, and they are abstracted away through call inst uh, um, to call site. 
Like it's not true anymore. Um, so we actually have um, more than that by now, but this was like an old slide. Now the passes, like IPO passes, look at this and what they see is actually call sites. They don't care if it's an invoke or a call. If they care, they look at it, but, but a lot of them don't. Now, what I said, okay, we have this abstraction to like, hide the fact that it's, that it's one of multiple uh, things, but it provides you with an interface to query what argument is what parameter and the other way around. What is the callee? Where is the instruction? And so on. So what, what, we, what I added is I added transitive call sites in an abstract call site, which uh, the abstract call sites is, a, is an interface layer that hides the fact if you have a call site or a transitive call site. Now, what is a transitive call site? Think pthread create. pthread create takes a function pointer in a void pointer argument. And what pthread create does at the end of the day is it invokes the function pointer with the void pointer as argument. That is a transitive call site. Like pthread, when you call pthread create, you have a direct call to pthread create and a transitive call to the function pointer you provided later on. And that is a transitive call site, which we now model, and we abstract away through abstract call sites in the IR. And all IPOs deal with abstract call sites instead of direct call sites. So it will be sound, or it is sound, because the IPOs that are not ported to abstract call sites will just work on call sites and everything is fine. But we can, like I ported one IPO to abstract call sites, and this is all functional change I had to make, which is um, the get arc operand. Like, what is, what is the argument passed at position i? In call sites, that is always known. There is always an argument because there, there is a one-to-one -one mapping between arguments and parameters. In abstract call sets, there's not. The mapping is, is partial in both directions. So you might not have an argument for parameter and a, and a parameter might not have a corresponding argument. So we have to deal with the fact that, there, that, the, that the mapping from arguments to parameters is, is partial but once you do that, your IPO is almost ready to work on transitive call sites, and then you have like an IPO that works across parallel sequential boundaries. So this was like this part here. If, if the mapping was, was partial, just assume it's not a constant, because we don't know what it is. That is what it means. So just assume it's not a constant. Okay, so this was my initial example with 140% slowdown, right? I showed you only the left part here. So everything on the right is new. But I showed you this before. Remember, no OpenMP versus OpenMP executed sequentially. Now, I enable two under procedural optimizations that we have, um, attribute propagation and argument promotion to use abstract call sites. At first, nothing happens. If I only enable attribute propagation to use abstract call sites, all is the same. If I enable argument promotion to use abstract call sites, also no change. But if I enable both to use abstract call sites, my overhead is gone. Like there is no overhead for me. Like I, I didn't spend time in the runtime that cost the, that did cost the overhead of 140 percent. It was just optimizations that were um, that were hindered by the fact that I did the outlining early, and now I had like an interprocedural problem. But if I enable interprocedural passes and make them better and work across this like outlining uh, OpenMP runtime interface, I get rid of, like I get all the optimizations I need and I get rid of the, of the overhead I introduced. Now, let me, let me conclude here. So what, you've, what, what I tried to show you, let me put it like that, is that we currently face very odd problems when it comes especially to target offloading. That certain codes perform reasonably well and you do like, you do, changes to them that should improve your performance and they don't. You actually get worse performance. And in those cases, we, we have a problem. So sometimes, currently, there's only a specific pattern how you have to write your code to get good performance. And if you don't use that, you don't, which is unfortunate. So the compiler should be able to help you and not hinder you in how to write your code. It should allow you to write it in a more lenient way, not restrict you in what kind of combinations of pragmas you can use. Now, there's different ways to, to uh, optimize a like, parallel program. You can optimize the sequential aspects and the parallel aspects. And for GPU offloading, we don't do either. We do, currently don't do uh, either, and we should do both. And by now, we have two ways proposed, at least, and, and, and partially implemented that actually do this. So we're on a good way here, 
But um, especially the one module um, thing is a roadblock. So we have to work around that. We have to find a solution for this. Multiple, multiple targets in a single module. Now, this, is, this was the, the graphic how I would like our call, the whole scheme for OpenMP target offloading to look like. Um, we move the logic, we like, limit, like, reduce the number of function calls we have to know something about, and we merge the host and device code module. And finally, I've shown empirically that there is uh, real potential in removing overheads that are currently induced um, by OpenMP or other parallel languages. It doesn't really matter if it's OpenMP. Like at the end of the day, all parallel runtime and code or all parallel runtimes work the same way. They all work like open uh, like piecework create work. Like there is some like you outline something that you want to have executed on a on a on a device or in parallel or like in other in any other setting than your current. And then you, you specify what, per, what arguments are passed, and then you have this transitive behavior. And um, we can get rid of, like, we can improve our performance here by a lot if we go down this road and actually make optimizations work in this setting. Okay, thank you. Right on. Okay. All right, thanks a lot. Do we have any questions? All right. I will, I will just assume you're all tired. Uh, or you were very clear. <laughs> yeah, there's. <laughs> In any right. case, that's it for this afternoon. Have fun tonight if you're going. Otherwise, we'll see you all tomorrow morning. Thank you. <laughs>